In part 1 of my personal experience of practicing the 12-step Ho'oponopono process, I shared my story of how Ho'oponopono has helped me to overcome my ego and saved my family. In part 2, I'm going to share more of my experiences. I hope you'd be inspired. My wife, Angelina, had a lot of traumas when she was a child. When she was 4 years old, her only sister, maybe a year older than her, was killed by a fallen boulder. Angelina was there to witness the horrible accident. Her grandmother collapsed and died at home when she was alone with her grandmother. Angelina grew up in a remote village of China. The conditions of life were very harsh. Her father had a very bad temper. He often verbally abused Angelina's mother, sometimes even physically abused her in front of a little girl. Once her mother attempted suicide by cutting her wrists. Angelina came home from school and saw her mother lying in bed unconscious. She ran out of the house and cried for help. Fortunately her mother was saved. These traumatic childhood experiences left so much pain and fear in her. She's aware of her fear but she can't shake it off. I did several Ho'oponopono on her childhood traumas over four months. Now, when Angelina talks about those incidents, she does not have the fear. She is much more at peace. Speaking of childhood trauma. We adopted a cat, Happy, when she was two months. Separated from her mother and siblings, she had a lot of anxiety. She felt unsafe and unprotected at our house. In the first week, she hid herself and was difficult to find. Once, she went into the crawl space of the foundation of the house. A crawl space is like a basement but only has 8 inches of clearance. We could hear her but she wouldn't come out for two days. I had to crawl into the space to get her out. Eventually she settled down. But she only trusts me and wouldn't let anyone else get close to her. I did a Ho'oponopono on her childhood trauma. The next morning, my wife said to me, what's happening to Happy? She didn't run away when she saw me. She seems to be very relaxed. Since then, Happy is no longer afraid of my wife and let her get close to her. Still, she doesn't want my wife to touch her. A good friend of my wife, Paula, not her real name, raised her son and daughter by herself after a divorce many years ago. Her ex-husband has been very bitter about the divorce. He often makes demeaning comments about Paula in front of the children. Paula asked me to help resolve the bitterness of her ex-husband. I said I couldn't promise her anything but I'd try. I did Ho'oponopono in Paula's name with her ex-husband. Then I forgot about it. A month later, on Mother's Day, Paula sent me a message saying that, in their family group chat, her ex-husband thanked her for her sacrifice all these years raising their children. That was the first time ever her ex-husband expressed appreciation for her. For me, it was wonderful news and great validation. Another good friend of my wife, Jojo, has a very unhappy marriage. Her husband doesn't appreciate her role in the family. She raises two young kids and does part-time work. Her husband makes over $200,000 a year. He always complains that Jojo doesn't get a full-time job to contribute to the household income. He doesn't understand Jojo is tired all the time due to poor health. He often belittles and sometimes verbally abuses her in front of their sons. They fight a lot. I did a Ho'oponopono in the name of her husband with Jojo. Within two weeks, something strange happened. Jojo started her own business recently and had to buy a pickup truck. On the day she went to the car dealer, her husband took a day off from work and volunteered to go with her. On the way to the car dealer, he gave her a check for $6,000 towards the car payment. It was a pleasant surprise for her and a validation to me. One early morning I heard a loud bang. I knew there was a car accident. I went out, and sure enough, a young man smashed his car into my neighbor's car, that was parked on the street. Fortunately no one was hurt. My neighbor's English is not good. So I stayed at the scene to help him translate. The police came and left. 
I was busy helping my neighbor making phone calls to insurance companies on both sides. I did a ho'oponopono that day with everyone and everything involved in the accident, including the driver, my neighbor, the police officers, the cars, the insurance companies. Within a week, the insurance company concluded the case and wrote a big check to my neighbor, much more than he expected. He used the money to buy a newer car with lower mileage. We made a road trip to South Lake Tahoe during Christmas last year. The day before the trip, I did a ho'oponopono on the lake, the land, the hotel and hotel rooms, the restaurants, EV charging stations, the roads we were going to take, and anyone we would be interacting with. The whole trip was smooth and stress-free. We had a very good time. Angelina had a customer, let's call him Wei. He was a successful musician and a music teacher. Wei had a chronic problem with his lower back and legs. When he walked, he limped. He came to Angelina's store regularly to use a massage bed for therapy. As with other customers, he became a friend of Angelina. Around last September, he stopped coming to the store for a few months. We later learned that he was diagnosed with some kind of irreversible muscular atrophy. Out of fear and hopelessness, he ended his life by putting a bullet in his head. He was in his mid-fifties. A few months later, Angelina felt Wei's presence every night in our bedroom for several days. One day, she felt his presence at the store during daytime. At that point, she told me about it. I did a Ho'oponopono to release him. In the middle of my Ho'oponopono prayer, I felt a chill from my feet moving up my spine. I wasn't scared and continued with the steps. Since then, Angelina has not felt Wei's presence. My 82-year-old friend, Judy, moved into an apartment of a housing project for the elderly. It was a beautiful apartment at subsidized rent. Very soon, she noticed that someone was breathing down her neck when she went to bed. She told me about it in a causal conversation. I did a Ho'oponopono with the earthbound entity in Judy's apartment, and all other entities in the building, to release them to the path of pure light. Judy hasn't felt any presence of entities since then. To continue with Judy, an old lady passed away recently in her building. The deceased lady's children gave Judy a desk and a bookshelf. When I knew about this, I told Judy that it's okay to accept the furniture but I had to do a ho'oponopono to cleanse the energy and to cut all akar cords attached to the furniture. I did the same to some jewelry gifted to my wife from her friend, who died of cancer. When Morna presented her Ho'oponopono at the 1980 seminar, someone felt that her process was time-consuming. Morna's response was that we should take the time to do a thorough job. I took her advice, and do my daily practice on all kinds of issues that concern me. Ho'oponopono is a petitioning process, not a getting what I want process. My life is much more peaceful since I became a Ho'oponopono practitioner. I hope you will join me.